Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in our last video, we explored the materials, smart materials and smart mask in Substance Painter. And today we are going to take a look at the generators, grunge maps and filters. And in a couple of more videos, we are going to be finished with the basics of this software. And then we are going to move on to creating our own materials and texturing some assets. So I have this create asset again. So first we are going to take a look at the polygon fill and I'm going to show you how it works. Let's use a smart material for this. Let's try this wood box. So when you drag a material and drop it in the layers, so it's going to be applied on this entire mesh. But uh, as you can see that there are some parts in this asset which are not wood and uh, we need to apply a metal material for this. But if we drag and drop a metal here, then again, it's going to be applied on the entire mesh. So how can we exclude uh, some parts of the model from this texture? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a black mask. Now all that material is gone. And now I can manually select which part of this model is going to use this texture. So here we have this polygon fill. And uh, here we have some fill modes. So if this uh, color is too white and the value is one, then it's going to be in the paint mode. And if it's here on the black side and the value is zero, then it's going to be on the erasing mode. So you can also switch this by using X on your keyboard. So first we have this triangle, so it's a triangle fill. So you can select and fill the texture in your triangles of your mesh. So if I click here like this, it's going to apply this texture on a triangle of this mesh here. And uh, we have this uh, polygon fill, which works the same way as the triangle. So it takes a polygon to apply this texture. So if I select here, so this material is going to be applied here on this polygon. And now we have this object. Now this model is made from different objects and there are different cubes, different cylinders. So we can manually select each object to apply this texture. So if I want to apply this wood texture on this entire model, but not on these parts, which are metallic. So what I can do is I can select this entire model and now it's textured. But if I want to exclude these parts, I'm going to press X. Or I can just turn down this dial here all the way to black. And now I can deselect these metallic parts. So if I deselect this, then uh, texture is going to be removed from here. Like this. And I can deselect all the parts I want. We just need to select the objects like this and at last we have this uv fill here so if i want to remove this texture or add this texture to a particular part of a uv so i can go to this 3d and 2d view or 2d view so i can just select a uv to apply or remove this texture So if I want to remove the textures from uh, the top of this box here, so I can just deselect this one. And if I want to apply, then uh, I can press X or change the dial to the white and then select it again like this. That's how uh, the polygon fill works. You need to add a black mask to make it work and then you can manually select your objects. So I'm going to change my view to 3D only and uh, let's take a metal material for these metallic parts. And for this, I'm going to take uh, iron material. Let's take uh, this iron forge old and drop it on the top of this layer. And it's going to cover this entire asset. And we again have to use the polygon fill. So I'm going to add a black mask and select this polygon fill. And we have to manually select the object where we want this texture. So Let's change it to object mode and select these parts like this.
and now you can go back here and you can make all these changes in these layers you can change the color to something like this So that's how you can use a uh, polygon fill. So we are now going to use a generator and see how all these generators works. So I'm going to add some uh, edge damage to this box. And for that, I'm going to take another wood material, wood rough and drop it here. And I'm also going to turn down the height and change the projection to tri planner, increase the scale. Like this and I'm going to right click here add a black mask and then right click again and take a generator and to add edge damage we can either use these mask editor or uh, metal edgeware or the curvature so let's use metal edgeware for this one and then you can control this mask from all these parameters you can increase the contrast to make these damages more sharp and you can increase this damage by going here and increasing this wear level like this you can increase the grunge amount and you can always go back to this material and change its color something like this and if you want to add the damage here you can you can open these uh, technical parameters and uh, you can decrease height position but for that you have to turn on this height channel and now you can decrease the height position and now you can see some damage let's change it to 0 0.45 or 0 0.475 And that's how you can use all these generators. So I'm going to show you one more. So let's add uh, some dirt here. I'm going to use this rust fine for this. So drop it here. Change the projection to tri planner and let's increase the scale. Let's take five and again add a black mask, add a generator and uh, let's search for dirt this time. And we are going to use this dirt. And now we have dirt in all the corners and the cavities and the top of the surface. And you can go back to this material and change the color. So something like this. You can control this dirt generator uh, from all these parameters. You can decrease the dirt level if you don't want more dirt in your scene. Like this. And you can increase the dirt contrast. You can also increase the grunge amount. If you want more dirt in your scene like this. And you can also manually remove this dirt. And as I showed you in the last video, you can add a paint layer here. And let's take a brush. And press X to change your brush. To erase mode and you can remove some of this dirt here like this So that's how you can use all these generators and now I'm going to show you how you can use uh, all these filters in Substance Painter. So let's hide all these layers. I'm going to put them in a group and then hide it. Now if I want to add some bump to this model here, what I can do is I can take a paint layer and uh, turn off every other layer except the height 
increase the height value and I can just paint like this. Now this bump is too sharp and if I want to blur this bump and make it soft, what I can do is I can right click here on this layer and add a filter. And in this filter, we can search blur and select this blur filter. And if you increase the value of this blur, then you can see that it's going to blur this dent here. And that's how you can uh, create wrinkles in your clothes and skin. And it's very useful for texturing like that. And there are more filters. So let's take a look at another filter. And for that, I'm going to import a material here. Let's try this plastic. Now I can change the colors from here or what I can do is I can right click here, add a filter and in this filter I can look for this HSL perceptive and here I can change the hue and saturation of the colors, lightness or I can use any other filter. I can use the contrast and luminosity. I can use a gradient if I want like this. I can change the color of the gradient. So I can make any change I want using these filters. And there are a tons of filter for you to use. So you can use all these filters and generators on any of these materials or any of these layers and how you use them it's totally up to you just be creative and try different things try attaching different assets so we have covered the generators and uh, filters and at last we have these grunge maps here so let's take a look at these grunge maps and for that i'm going to take another material here so let's take a metal material for this one i'm going to take this row iron and let's change the color a little to something like this. Now we have all these uh, grunge maps here. So if I want some directional noise like this, what I can do is I can add a new fill layer, add a black mask. And in this black mask, we have to add a fill to use all these grunge maps. And I'm going to just select this and drop it here like this. And we have this uh, directional noise here. I can control the balance from here like this. You can create wood fiber with this. So let's uh, go back to this material and we can change the color to something like this. And uh, we can make it metallic. And we can add some variation in the textures using these uh, grunge maps like this. Now if you want some dirt gradient, what you can do is you can take another fill layer, add a black mask and add a fill and just select this, drop it here and you can use this dirt gradient map as a grunge map like this and you can change the color from here. Let's take something like this, increase the roughness. And you can control this uh, gradient from this layer here. You can increase the balance if you want more dirt. And you can use more than one grunge map at the same time. So if you want to add some something like this grunge dirt thin, you can just add a fill here and then drop this here. And then they can work together. But for them to work together, you have to go to this blending mode option and change it to linear dodge. Let's uh, try to create a material using all these uh, grunge maps. So I'm going to take a new fill layer and uh, increase the roughness. Let's take 0.84 and change the color to something like this. And now I'm going to take a new fill layer or you can just duplicate this one. Add a black mask and in this black mask, let's add a fill. 
and I'm going to take the directional noise this one place it here change the color just a little bit make it a little darker like this go back to this directional noise and increase the scale to 3 and then I can duplicate this layer again place it up here and uh, this time I can make it a little lighter again add a black mask and add a fill and we can take this directional noise again like this and we can create the wood fibers here and a texture like wood so you can increase the balance of this directional noise like this and to add some uh, height value to it what you can do is take a new fill layer and let's disable the color metal roughness and normal add a black mask and uh, add a fill and let's select this anisotropic noise here drop it here and uh, just decrease the height value like this and now you can see some damage like wood and you can select it change the projection to tri planner and increase the scale something like this let's take 20 and you can decrease the height if you want more damage like this minus 0 0.1 and now we have a wood like texture and if this height is too strong what you can do is right click and add a filter and now we can use that blur filter we used before and now these uh, fibers are blurred you can decrease the intensity just a little bit like this and that's how you can create a wood texture using some basic solid color layers and uh, all these uh, grunge maps let's add some dirt here so what i'm going to do is uh, Add a black mask and add another fill and here search for the dirt and uh, let's let this grunge dirt muddy and drop it in this fill like this go back to this material and change the color increase the roughness and uh, go back to this grunge layer increase the scale like this to 3 and you can increase the balance like this So that's how you can use all these generators, grunge maps and filters to texture your assets in Substance Painter. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as well. And in our next videos, we are going to texture some real assets in Substance Painter. We are going to take a model and I'm going to show you complete texturing process start to finish. So if you enjoyed this, then drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.